Hello, I want to talk about programming and coding. What is the future for programs and coding in the future? Um, you know, I'm not a coder, I'm not a programmer. So I can only talk about this from a little bit of um, a distance. My observation is, is that um, people who code are very, very close to people who write. That, that writing is a kind, a code is kind of like a language and that people are coding are kind of writing in a different language. And that there's very many similarities between being an author and a coder. And some of my observations about what the future of coding might look like may have parallels to about what the future of writing might look like. One of the things that um, I've noticed is that coders, programmers, are more and more looking at YouTube to help them solve problems. You would not expect that because you think that coding is text-based like writing. But in fact, um, it turns out that the medium of moving images is really, really good as a teacher and that people like to see how people type and put the text on the screen and move around and point in order to actually more quickly absorb that solution that they've been seeking for. So I think one of the things that we might see in coding and programming is um, a visual element of it, much more visual than just the text. In 20 years from now, yes, people will still be coding with writing text, but I think that we'll see more visual aspects of it where you can drag and drop, where there are, um, uh, in virtual reality, you can have gestures and 3Ds and voice input. So the interface, the interface to that writing, that text, that coding will be expanded. And it won't just be, again, keyboard typing, fingertips or thumbs. There may be much more voice, you're talking and typing, or much more gesture oriented. Programmers are very famous for doing keyboard shortcuts because it is much more gesture rather than just um, uh, moving a mouse. And I think um, we can kind of imagine the interface to programming being expanded with AR, VR, voice, and gestures. So that's the interface to it. By far the most potent instrument in the future of programming will be AI itself. Uh, I keep saying AI will transform everything, and this is another one of those everythings that's going to transform. It is going to be used in an assist manner. There will be some programs that <clears throat> will be attempted to be written by AIs alone, but for the most part, it's going to be used in a way that we kind of already use AIs when we search, like autocomplete. So... There's an AI that's kind of observing or absorbing your programming, and it's going to can suggest in an autocomplete way this next bit of code is su being suggested by the AI watching you work. So they're on your team, you're working with it, and it's saying, you know, like an autocomplete sentence or in the way you have your phone and you're autocompleting a text is suggesting the next thing that you put in there. And that's a nudge, and it can make it go a little faster, and maybe it moves a whole, has a whole block of code that it can just immediately paste into you as at your suggestion and your approval. That kind of symbiotic partnership with an AI, I think, is going to be how a lot of code is going to be written, where it's watching over your shoulder, what you're writing, kind of compiling in the background to see what it works and say, oh, Based on what you've written so far, I think this is going to be next, this next. And then you are approving or disapproving and teaching as you go along. So there's still, it, 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 it's a partnership. It's a team. It's a centaur where the AI may be suggesting things or even going back as spell checkers do and correcting, again, suggesting errors. See, I went through this and based on what you've written so far, I think there'll be an error right here. Why don't you double check that? So that's one way. The, the, the other way, I think, um, you know, again, the way most of the code in the world, let me put it this way, most of the code in the world is not revolutionary. 
It's not innovative. It's just real incremental improvement or it's customized. You know, you need another website. Well, that has been done a billion times already. There's really no reason that you have to be creative in that way. You can just take a template. And for most purposes, that's all you need. And the same way with coding. While there's certainly a huge value in being innovative in how you code or in coding something very innovative, a lot of life does not require that. It just requires something very sound, dependable, reliable that works. In that case, you're just taking code off the shelf and maybe tweaking it. And that kind of tweak, again, can be done with an AI assist. It can be done in blocks. It can then by kind of reusing, where we're, again, this idea of template kind of building where you have as libraries of things that are being reused. And the problem with libraries has been that it's very hard to even know it's in the library. And the, the kind of more of a beginner you are, the more that you need those libraries, the more difficult they are for you to access. And this is where AI again can come in as an assist because the AI can work with the beginner in kind of finding the right blocks at the right time. So they're actually, you're actually not writing new code. You're actually just assembling the code with the help of AI. The AI is actually not writing anything. The AI is just finding you the parts that you need because you didn't even know where they are or that they're even available. And so that kind of a partnership where you have a very knowledgeable guide who is not going to generate anything new, but just find all the parts that you need to bring together in this kind of generic required thing that you need. So it is, it is programming, but in an incremental sense, where you're just tweaking or assembling something on a customizable personal basis using a very sophisticated system of AI to actually help you as an amateur do that. The other thing that, as we reuse bits of code, it's been our dream for, for ages, um, is the idea that, that it kind of bumps up the level of, of abstraction that humans can work at. So we're kind of, you know, you can kind of, an ordinary citizen, I could kind of do some code. If I, if I have a batch mode something or I'm doing a macro, I am coding at that point, but at a very high level. I'm not doing anything below it. I'm just manipulating the logic of coding, if, and, and, or, and I'm putting that together in a kind of a logical way. That is the type of synaptic structuring that a writer would do. And that level of abstraction is now more and more possible. So what the tools and technology allows us to do is kind of submerge a lot of the details and allow us to program at very high levels, the level of an app where we want these things, and we're still having to program it in a logical way, but we're not having to do all the millions of other little things below. And so higher level is one of the ways that we're going to be doing programming. The other thing that's going on with code and programming is that we're moving to the cloud very, very rapidly. And it turns out that the platform that I think the next platform that we're going to be coding on is the cloud itself. That is the thing that we're running on. So you don't actually run on a particular machine. Well, I should say the machine that you're running on is the machine of all the machines. It's the internet. And in the same way that the web, the web was sort of programming for the cloud, although it's, the code still ran on a particular machine. Um, now the code is kind of spread over many machines. It's not a particular A machine 2053 that it's running on. It's running on the cloud itself. And that requires new skills, new perspective, new awareness, and, um, and I think probably even a new way of programming. Um, in general, it's a type of parallel programming. And parallel programming, which is another thing needed for very large computers, it, it is very different from the von Neumann one thing after another that we're normally taught 
as, uh, as programming code. This is where you're doing many things in parallel and simultaneous, and the interactions between the things are very, very complicated, very hard to, to unravel. And that kind of a skill of programming kind of in a non von Neumann way is going to be very, very powerful in short supply, valuable. And because it's not intuitive, it's also going to be very hard to do. But for all these reasons, I think the ability to program in parallel, to program on the cloud, will become one of the highest paid jobs one could imagine, or highest paid occupations. Um, and so um, I don't have in my head any kind of tips about how you program in parallel and on the cloud. But I do know that this is fundamentally a, a different approach than we normally would think of as the languages that are now being taught, say, in school. Finally, another world, another opportunity for programming is in security. Um, I think that we can't, that we're at the point where you have to think about security as you program, no matter what you do, and that more and more, particularly as you move to the cloud, that security becomes a fundamental aspect of whatever we do, because there is only one cloud and it's available to everybody. And the cloud security is your security, and there's no such thing as national or corporate security. There's only cloud security. And so um, that thinking, that, again, that perspective, that kind of coding, that kind of programming is not really being taught right now. And I think if you self-teach yourself that, if you are a business organization and you absorb this idea that the security is a fundamental aspect from the very beginning, um, the issues around security, privacy, cyber attacks, all that kind of stuff, all bundled up in this one word security. Um, it's going to become a fundamental, um, necessary ingredient from the beginning of any project and any code that we write. Um, and so um, those are the frontiers, the, the, the cloud, parallel computing, security, higher abstraction and recycling of of code modules, I think that's where the future of programming will be, will be headed in the next 10 or 20 years.